Welcome back to All In. I'm Pamela Horton, your favorite cat lady, here to verbally vomit and excitedly tell you about the history and significance of Final Fantasy VII. Oh, oh man, Final Fantasy VII, what a game. I'm sure there's a lot of you sitting here listening to me and silently cheering or loudly cheering about how it's your favorite game of all time. In my personal experience, I'd have to say it was tied between Final Fantasy VII and Chrono Trigger as people's favorite game of all time. Either way, go square! Final Fantasy follows our favorite mercenary Cloud as he joins an eco-terrorist group to take on the evil Shinra Corporation who are using the planet's livestream to power their nefarious schemes. But of course, 95% of you knew that. The other 5% are gonna learn on June 10th, right? Huh? The original Final Fantasy VII was released in 1997 and wowed the world as the first ever Final Fantasy game to feature 3D models. At the beginning stages, Square was testing out the Super Nintendo and even the Nintendo 64 to make a direct sequel to Final Fantasy VI. In fact, they were testing out a 2D prototype, but then they put a pin in it to go work on Chrono Trigger. By the time they finished that and then came back, the price of developing on a cartridge was just way too dang expensive. Plus, there was the success of the Final Fantasy VI demo on Soft Image 3D that kind of coaxed them into working in 3D. But that meant that they needed a lot of space, so they decided to go with the PlayStation CD-ROM system for three whole discs of space. Back then, that was crazy. There were a lot of franchise firsts for Final Fantasy VII. It was the first game to show blood, the first game to introduce chocobo racing, first to showcase the origin of the monsters, and the first game to use profanity. Ooh, I'm telling. It was also the most expensive game developed up until that point. And I consider every dollar spent on Final Fantasy VII incredibly worth it. Not just because it was one of the best-selling games of all time, but because it was one of the most influential games of all time. We're talking game developers, artists, musicians, and everything in between on a creative side being inspired by Final Fantasy VII. FF7 helped establish a foundation for JRPGs in the US. Although I'm sure you've heard the term was not originally released in the US, but it would have been much more prevalent had it not been for the success of Final Fantasy VII. One of my favorite aspects of this game is the music. I think also one of my favorite aspects of gaming is the music. <laughs> that could just also be my infatuation with my boy Nobuo Uematsu. <laughs> uh, if Final Fantasy VII is the most influential game of all time, Nobuo Uematsu is the most influential composer. When creating music for Final Fantasy VII, Uematsu decided to treat it like a soundtrack to a film instead of just creating melodies that would define the game. His ability to capture melancholy, intensity, excitement, and sadness is second to none. By far, the most influential music in gaming. The choice to use digitized vocals for One Wing and Angel were mwah, so great. It also made the impact of that battle that much more life-changing. I'm pretty sure I've stated how much I love Nobuo Uematsu for every video I've done for GameStop TV, but I stand by it. I do. One thing I would be remiss to mention is one of the most iconic moments in gaming. In fact, it's so well known because of the trauma and disbelief it caused. I know you're thinking it, I'm thinking it, he's thinking it, she's thinking it. We are collectively thinking about Aerith's death and it is one of the most painful moments in gaming. It wasn't like, you know, they just put her in a coma or had her abducted. No, her murder was brutal. So brutal, in fact, that fans everywhere sent a petition to Square to be like, hey, could you release a version of the game that doesn't have her die or has her come back at least, please? People were crying and depressed after her murder. Not only was it traumatizing, but the way the interactions in the game mourned her made it that much more painful. The heartbreak was real, but that's also a testament to the storytelling by Square. Cinematic storytelling and its use created a new standard in gaming after the journey created for us by director Yoshinori Kitase and producer and series creator Hironobu Sakaguchi. RPGs became less about the grind, the battles, and the rarest items, and more about an engaging linear experience. Because of the success of this one game, we have a more immersive gaming experience. I know some of my favorite titles were inspired by the mechanics and story of Final Fantasy VII. I'm sure you have some too. Because of how impactful and adored FF7 is, 
it makes sense that one of the biggest announcements ever at E3 was the remake. Fans had been asking for ports and remakes and offshoots ever since the original released in 1997. I remember being present at this announcement and just tearing up. Fans everywhere were going to be able to experience it again in a much bigger and improved way. It was also an exciting opportunity for new players to have Final Fantasy VII change their lives forever. If you didn't play when the original came out in 1997, and you didn't play when the remake launched, allow this to be your opportunity to play Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrated, releasing exclusively on PS5 on June 10th. Get it on GameStop.com or at a store near you. That is it for me, guys. Thank you for hanging out on All In. I'm Pamela Horton. Hit me up on Twitter and let me know how Final Fantasy VII impacted your life. I would honestly love to hear it. Until next time, love you, bye!